Hi everyone. In the last videos, we talked about concurrency, parallelism, and concurrency versus par parallelism. In this video, we are going to be talking about synchronous and asynchronous coding patterns. So, when you write a C, C++, Python code in a functional programming language kind of a way, what happens? So, in our analogy, these are functions: function one, function two, function three, and function four, right? And then the size of the function or the size of the rectangular block. says that how much time this function takes versus how much time this function takes so let's say if this function is bigger than this function it means that function 1 takes more time to finish than function 2 so if you say function 1 then function 2 function 3 then function 4 in a standard synchronous programming paradigm function 1 is going to ex execute and then function 2 3 4 are going to wait for function 1 to complete when it completes function 2 is going to run 3 and 4 are going to wait then function 3 is going to run 4 is going to wait and then finally 4 is going to run so if you take a look at the timing then it takes a lot of time for this execution to actually complete now taking a look at asynchronous programming paradigm take a look at this so if uh, rather if rather executing these functions in one in the order of 1 2 3 and 4 we execute these at the same time in an asynchronous fashion look what happens so function 1 2 3 and 4 are running simultaneously in a concurrent kind of a way right so it might be like this it might be like this right so function 1 runs function 2 and 3 are executed at the same time they don't need to worry about if function 1 has been is being called or has returned something or not they are called irrespective of function 1 function 4 is also being called at the same time asynchronously so all of these functions are running asynchronously they don't need to wait for these other functions and they they have no idea about these other functions and to to have them get the idea about the other functions is what is known as inter process communication so let's say i have this function 2 which needs something from function 1 and as well as it needs something from function 4 so it can take those things in in a process which is called IPC or inter-process communication, and then if you take a look at this, the timing is nowhere near close uh, to the synchronous pattern. So asynchronous patterns are really good when you are looking at web development or where you are looking at bulk tasks or tasks which take a lot of time, so that you don't have to wait for those tasks to happen. You can do this in a fire and forget manner. so fire means calling a function and then forgetting means that okay you called a function you don't need to worry about the completion of the function you can immediately start calling other functions and you don't have to worry about them being completed as well but as soon as all of these functions are completed you can run another function which would say that okay return zero or something like that return zero right so this is synchronous pattern versus asynchronous design pattern so in the next video we are going to be delving into go and how to uh, how to do go routines and asynchronous programming paradigm in golang in a practical kind of a way so stay tuned and see you guys in the next video